Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for being with us. Thank you for the fact that you're a God who's present with us in our lives. Lord, on this second Easter, on this time a week from the actual resurrection, help us to live out our lives in a way knowing that the resurrection was real. Help us to live out our lives in a way knowing that uh, Jesus is more real than we are. Help us to live out our lives knowing that the promise he made, lo, I'll be with you to the end of the age, is really there. And not just know that he's there, but utilize his presence as he utilizes us. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. The gospel for this week comes to us from John chapter 20. It says, when it was evening, the day of the resurrection, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had been locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who is called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. I got a question. How good of a worry are you? Do you worry a lot? I mean, do you have a lot of fears, a lot of worries? You know, it, it's funny. I've heard it said that, that, that doubt isn't the opposite of faith, that worry actually, worry and fear is the opposite of faith. It's the enemy of faith. Worry and fear sort of erode your faith from you. It takes you, gets you off center. But how many of us have had worries all our lives? And in fact, you know, I mean, that's part of our fabric that, that we just worry. We preserve a rate over things. You know, I tried to think back of all the things that I used to be frightened of and worry about. Yeah, I remember going to school in kindergarten and being scared to death to where I threw up every morning before I'd get on the bus because I just was scared to death to go. I was worried. I remember also a story of when uh, my best friend and I used to go into the woods. The woods were uh, the, at the end of my street in New Jersey. Uh, it was an undeveloped section in New Jersey at that point, which it's not anymore, but uh, it, it's it was an undeveloped, and they call it woods. It used to be farmland, but a whole lot of just, you know, wooded area, beautiful trees, the whole nine yards. And all the kids from my neighborhood used to play up there. But there was one thing that they said is don't be in there at dusk because there is a man that lives in there called the Whistler. And he'll kill you. He kills by the knife. There were stories of animals that had their throats slit that would be hanging up in inside the woods. But nonetheless, you know, all of us used to hang out there. I'll never forget being up there with my friend Jack. And we went through the woods to get up to New Dover Methodist Church. It was a graveyard up there that was, you know, from the 1700s. I mean, it was an old, old graveyard. And we used to walk through it and look at the graves. It was in the fall, so it got dark early and it was getting near dusk. And we were on the other side of the the graveyard and i'll never forget you know my friend jack looked over at me and said you feel like we're getting watched 
I said, you know, I, I really think I do. And then all of a sudden I heard, I looked over and there was a person coming at us out of the corner. The two of us took off and started running. I mean, we just, we just took off. I'll be up front with you. I found out later it was my brother telling me it was time for dinner. They say that most of the worries that ha we have, most of the fears are just usually imaginary. They never come to fruition. They never come and, and, and into being. But God, Jesus, must have always known about worries. In fact, do you know how many times in the Bible that it's mentioned, do not be afraid, do not worry? 365 times. We have the story today of the evening of the resurrection. In other words, Easter night. And it says that 10 of the disciples are together in the upper room. Thomas isn't there. He's there the following week, but he's not there this night. Also, of course, Judas isn't there because he's already committed suicide. It says they're behind the door, which is locked for fear of the Jews. And Jesus comes and passes through the door and is with them. You know, I've got to tell you, I mean, when I first heard about that, I was like, well, how did he do that? You know, was it like a Mandrake the Magician thing? Did he just kind of do it? And I'll never forget talking to a friend of mine that was a PhD in Hebrew studies. And he said, no, what, what most Jewish Christians believe is that Jesus didn't pull a trick. It was that they believe that he was more real than the actual wooden door. That his reality was so powerful, it was so real that he passed through. You know, if you take that as reality, which to tell you the truth, I do, then the door which represents for fear of the Jews, Jesus passed through fear. That he's more real than any fear that the disciples could have had at that moment. He's more real than any fears that we can have in our life. He's more real than any worries that we can have. After all, you know, it was that morning that he rose from the dead. I don't know about you, but I don't know anybody that says, geez, you know, I'm not a little leery of dying, you know. And yet he passed through death. That's what the Christian faith teaches us. So that if you believe that Jesus passed through death, and after all, why couldn't he pass through worry and fear? But how do you access that? How do you access that? You know, I mean, most of us with our worries and fears, I don't know about you, but me, I, I'm really pretty good at it. You know, I mean, worrying, I've mastered. I, I, I might not have a PhD, but I have a master's level. Uh, I, I mean, I, when I start worrying about something, I do pray about it usually immediately. But then I side off and my mind doesn't stay in the prayer. My mind goes to trying to research the whole event that I'm worried about or the thing that I did wrong or the thing that could happen. And I rewrite the whole thing into where, okay, well, it could go this way though. It could go that way. And I try and figure out how in the world it's going to go and try and move myself towards that. I, I, I don't know that that's what I'm supposed to be doing because I spend a lot of time really focusing on the worry rather than focusing on the life that's about me. And most of the worries, like we say, <laughs> never come about. And so I waste, I don't know how much time in survival mode when life is right there for me to grasp if I just simply focus on my creator, my Lord, my God. That doesn't mean that, that all of a sudden I have to be in this, you know, meditation, focusing on Jesus every second. But what it means is that I have to put him alongside of the worry that I have. And just simply say, okay, here's my God, here's my worry. Do I really believe that he's large enough to get me through this, no matter what the outcome? Because you see, that's what faith really is. It's not rewriting it so that you get through and you come on to the understand so you look perfect. It's actually trusting in a God that in your imperfection, you know he'll even come to you then. 
that he's never ever going to leave you, that he's not going to go away from you, that he's he's trustworthy in every event, and that he actually understands our worries, obviously, in this case, and in the following week, he does the same thing with Thomas, you know? They're both, each time, they're still behind locked doors, and yet he always comes in, and he's present with us as more real than the door of fears, more real than the door of death, more real than the door of anything that takes you away from life. It's interesting because after he comes through, it says that basically he says, peace be with you again. You know, don't be afraid. Peace be with you. And then he breathes on. He says, receive the Holy Spirit. Then he says a very important thing. He says, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. You know, I don't believe personally that he, you know, comes through and says to the disciples, okay, well, you have the power like I have the power and you can forgive sins of other people. You know, he may be saying, okay, you have the power to illustrate and show other people that their sins can be forgiven. But he doesn't make it so that all of a sudden they have this power that they can say, okay, well, you're forgiven and you're condemned. He doesn't do that because that's not what Jesus is all about. But he does say, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. What I think he's saying is more personal than it is about other people. You know, most of the time in my life, I read that and say, okay, well, I Give or not forgive. I have this power, which is true. But what it does is if I don't forgive the sins of people that have wronged me, then I'm the one that's bound up. You see, I mean, the thing that kills the buzz of spirituality, if you want to call it that, is resentment. And if you hold on to resentment, you know the old definition of resentment, it's having poison for somebody else, but drinking it yourself. And unless you forgive, that doesn't mean reconcile, doesn't mean move back, make that clear. It, but what it means is you free yourself from the bondage of holding on to that other person. Because when you have an unforgiveness in your life or resentment in there, and you haven't freed yourself from that, then every time you hear that name, every time you see that person, all of a sudden something tightens up inside of you and you're not moving closer to God, you're moving further from God. You're not moving closer to life, you're moving more towards, at best, survival but even maybe less, because all of a sudden they have power over you and they may not even know it. You see, what I think Jesus is trying to tell us more than anything else in this scripture is that he's real enough and he gives us the abilities and the techniques and the power, he breathes the Holy Spirit on us, to really find life in no matter what situation we're in. That we don't have to walk around no matter how crazy the outside world gets, no matter how crazy our family gets, no matter how crazy some of the relationships we have around us are, we don't have to let them have all the power over us that in actuality we can actually move closer to God and in a sense be freed of the power that they might exhibit on us. And yet most of us live in bondage by someone or something. We either carry something from the past or or we, you know, simply walk into bad situations over and over again. The point of this story is what I think my friend who had the PhD in Hebrew scholars, Jesus is more real than the door that's locked for fear of the Jews. But it's your choice. Do you believe? You believe, do you have faith? Or are you gonna still continue to try and rewrite the script and talk your way out of it and find out the the solution somewhere in your head to move it? Or are you gonna simply say, okay, this is what it is. Let me stack Jesus against this. And I'm gonna move forward knowing he goes with me and he'll show me what to do about that situation as I move forward with him, not try and rewrite it back here at my own desk. I hope you have a good Easter. We got a couple more weeks. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen.